Welcome to Episode 7 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our one and only David Stockin responds to an email we received from a young student, Jeremy N., asking us to go over the common tests for grounding systems. What do you say, David? All right, so that's a great question. What are the common tests we use for measuring and inspecting a grounding system? Um, and it turns out there's not a bunch of them. There's really just about three primary tests that we do. Uh, first of all, it's kind of important to remember why uh, we're testing these grounding systems and what the purpose of a, the grounding system is. And ultimately, much of our grounding system, it's one of its primary goals is to eliminate unwanted electrical currents and getting them out and putting them into the earth. Remember, electricity, uh, it's an electron that's been freed from its orbit, and it wants to get back onto another atom, right, somewhere. We happen to have a lot of atoms in the earth. So uh, the grounding system is ultimately a path for those electrons to get down into the earth and to eliminate them. So we need to, uh, or to at least balance those voltages as well. So we need to inspect not only a piece of metal, but we need to know how that metal connects to the earth. And then we also need to understand how the earth itself functions. So we have three different types of tests and uh, we call them the, the four point test, a three point test and a two point test, right? So the four point test, what we say is it's earth to earth. We're gonna, we wanna get an understanding of what the soil itself is like that are that is below our feet it has nothing to do with the piece of metal it's just you know put a pair of glasses on that you could see below grade what, what are the layers and what's in the soil below us how electrically conductive is that soil and you can imagine when electricity enters into the earth it's like dropping a pebble into water right this wave of electrons goes across the earth and if the soil gets more resistive as you go deeper, it's gonna to wanna to try to stay on the top and go across the surface of the earth, right? If it gets more conductive as we go deeper, it's gonna to wanna to go down and away. And that, uh, understanding how the soil, uh, what the various layers are in it, um, how conductive those are, is very important for understanding how our grounding uh, electrode system will function inside of that soil. And this gets back, uh, for those of you who've watched our previous videos, back in the sphere of influence. And you might want to go watch some of those videos if you want to understand how the size and shape of grounding systems impact inside of that soil, how uh, that works. But once we understand what the soil is like, then we need to understand what the interaction between a piece of metal that we stick in, into that soil uh, and the earth is going to work, right? And this is what we call the three-point test, or what we say metal to earth, right? So what we do is we use a reference point of this three-point test, we use a remote earth reference point, and we place a, uh, a measurement uh, as for reference to remote earth, and then we measure how effectively connected that electrode system is uh, in reference to that remote source. That's often called the resistance to ground or impedance to ground. And if you're in Europe, you might call it the resistance to earth or impedance to earth, right? And these are commonly uh, very, a very common test. We can do it for single electrodes, so we can measure it for multiple electrodes. And it's a great way of understanding the overall, uh, how effectively connected we are to the earth, right? And then the last test we call is the two-point test, or metal to metal, right? Has nothing to do with soil whatsoever, right? You could do a two-point test at the International Space Station, right? Or a 747 that's in the air, right? Has nothing to do with the uh, soil or dirt itself. All we're really trying to do is to see how effectively, how well bonded that metal network is from point to point, 
right? In our electrical codes, we have a requirement for a low fault, low impedance fault current path. And we want to see how, uh, how low that impedance path is. So we want to check from some sort of common reference point back to some other given point within our grounding system and measure the resistance or continuity um, from the two points from A to B and make sure it's nice and low. And when we mean low, we mean really low, like less than 0 0.1 ohms low, right? To make sure that that path, that there's a, a low impedance uh, between those given points. That makes sure that our circuit breakers will trip properly. It makes sure that differences in voltage don't form that can cause a uh, human uh, hazard and difference in potential. And so uh, and we have multiple different uh, methods for measuring these things, by the way. So when we get into an overall test by using a combination of these three different tests, by measuring the soil, by measuring the resistance to ground and measuring the continuity. And again, there's multiple ways to measure this, different techniques and different methodologies. And they, they function differently. We'll get to those in a different uh, video. But by looking at the overall view of all these tests that we do, the four point, the three point, and the two point test, you can actually get a pretty good understanding of what the grounding system looks like and how effective it is. And if it's bonded properly, if there's broken conductors in it, you can you really can get a pretty good understanding of uh, these large multi-parallel networked grounding systems. I like to tell people it would be wonderful if we could just uh, uh, call Scotty up in the enterprise and have him scan our grounding system for us, right? And hopefully one day we'll have that technology, right? Wouldn't that be great? And you just scan everything and tell us the answers. But we don't have that technology yet. Uh, one day we will, but we don't have it right now. And for right now, what we can do is we can measure the soil. We can measure the, re the resistance of those uh, electrodes in the soil and then we can measure the resistance or the continuity of the grounding system from point to point and by looking at all those together you can get a pretty effective understanding of uh, your grounding systems um, no matter how large or complex they are. So those are the three primary tests that we utilize to measure and check uh, grounding and earthing systems. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.